And as you can see, I got a tranny for this truck. Well, remember my pathetic begging video when I was looking for a tranny for my shitty Dodge farm truck? Well, it came through. I got one, but it ain't right, but I'm going to see if I can make it work. 727 came from a three-quarter ton pickup truck. Supposedly it's heavy duty. It came right from the owner who had the truck, so he swears it's good because he took it out and put a four-speed automatic in it. Thanks, Foster. Well, it did cost me a case of beer, so... But it's worth more than a case of beer just to take a tranny out, of course. So the plan is to take off the drive shaft, of course, then take off the tranny support cross member, and see if the tranny hangs down far enough that I can get long extensions to go over top of the transmission and get the bolts that are all around the top of the bell housing off without having to climb up top and reach over and try to get that little bit of space, my hand in there, and do the tranny bolts from the top because this is a cab forward design. So as you can see, the cab sits a foot forward over top of the motor. So it's a real pain in the ass to get the tranny bolts off. But when I tip that motor back, it looks like it might break the distributor cap off. So I'll have to do that first, get that thing off. And on this side behind that fill tube is the crank position sensor. So I'll have to get that off first because it might get broke. It's plastic. And to get at that, I'm going to have to take that crank tube off. I mean that, to get at that, I'm going to have to take that dipstick tube fill tube thing off first. And like I said before, I never did do a tranny on a Dodge truck or any rear wheel Dodge before, so it's all new, but nothing looks very special. All right, nothing's easy. Had to do a few tight bolts and tough to get at shit. That's why we got a cutting torch, heat them up, chop them. But she's ready to get the bell housing bolts out now. Starter swinging, cross members off. That was pretty easy, just four bolts and some holes that are already made to stick an air tool through. All the wires and peripherals are disconnected, which is a pain in the ass too. Not hard to get at, but frozen bolts. The Canada is rusty with high kilometers vehicles. And I'm going to show you the easy way to drop a tranny out without crawling under the hood at all. Of course, now you're looking at the back of the bell housing. And you can see those nuts. I'm going to have the long extension on here. I've got a U-joint. I got an air tool and I'm going to whip them off and I can't put this on video because of course I need three hands to do that but it's no big deal first I'm going to take off the tranny dipstick tube because that gives me access to where that little shiny metal plate is up in the middle there because that's the crank position sensor which is new in this vehicle so when I get that dipstick tube out then I can get a wrench in there and get that sensor off and well, I'm not actually ready to take all those bolts off yet because I still got to do the torque converter. And then we have to see if I can make that 727 fit. I have no experience, but I was told to take the counterweight off the torque converter because that 318 doesn't need it because the 727 came off a 360. <sighs> it's a beautiful day, not too hot, not too sweaty. <sighs> and so far, it's only been a two beer job. I've just been too busy to even drink, even though. It's longer than a two beer job. Well, now that that dipstick tube is out of the way, it's really easy to get a wrench on and get that mounting bracket off for the crank position sensor. No problem. Can't film that either because it takes three hands. All right, they're both out. Now I just got to make a few mods. Doesn't look too hard to cut out a hole where need be for a transmission crank position sensor. Actually the whole bell housing and everything looks pretty much the same. Gear shifter mechanism looks the same except I gotta add a kick down lever. Oh it's just the back of the tranny from there back. It's different. I'm sure the computer for the tranny will have a shit and give me all kinds of codes recognizing there's no tranny in this car. Because the only thing this has got is a neutral safety switch and a backup light connector. That one does too, but it's got a whole bunch of other connectors like that one. And a speed sensor connector, and of course this one used the cable since it's so old. That came from a 360, but it's the same. Now, let's see about the weight I have to remove. Oh yeah, so see this one's got no weight because it came from a 318. And that one has a weight, so I'll just uh, get the torch or something and cut off those two little spot welds. Then we should be all set. Except, next problem is, 
the drive shaft. It's aluminum and it's two and a half inches too short. That sucks. Well, maybe I'll go back in the forest and measure how long the drive shaft is on the 1978 Dodge truck that's back there. He said I could have the tranny, but since I already got one, it was too much work to take that one off, even though I would have saved a case of beer. <sighs> Pain in the ass. It's harder than a Chevy. I think it's harder than a Ford, too. A few more bolts to get off. You even got to take the oil filter off to get one of the bolts off. Gonna use a different dip stick, dip, dip stick tube, but we'll make her work. <laughs>